Hello everyone and welcome to part 13. I think it's about time we finally got some sound effects in the game, so that's what we're going to do in this part. Okay, they're very simple sound effects. I'm not the greatest sound engineer in the world. I mostly used um, a website called uh, BFXR to do a lot of these. Um, it's a cool website uh, based on a tool called SFXR, originally made for, I think, Ludum Diary and Game Jams and that kind of thing, for making 8-bit sound effects um, free for anyone to use uh, for any purpose, so it's really cool. Uh, go ahead and use that. Um, or use whatever sound effects you like. The ones I used will be in the description if you want to use those, but they're not amazing, so maybe find your own. <laughs> Up to you, either way. Um, so we've got a bunch of sound effects here. Here's my really simple sort of landing on grass uh, landing sound effect. Um, in case that's kind of quiet on the video, I'm not sure how well these audio is recording. We'll go to the shoot one, which is a bit louder. Let's see how I play that. Uh, bringing in a sound is basically the same as bringing in anything else, like just like bringing in a sprite. Okay, you right click and sound, you hit create, comes up with this, click the dotted thing, you navigate to wherever your sound is and you bring it in. Okay, there's a bunch of other options in here, as you'll see, attributes, uh, target options and so on, but um, all the default settings are fine for what we're going to do today, okay? This stuff helps determine how the sound is held in memory, um, and these do various different things related to the quality and playback. Um, but we don't really need to worry about any of them. All the default options are going to be absolutely fine for us. One thing to note with sound, and you'll notice this especially if you bring in music, um, the quality tends to get degraded when you hit the, uh, the preview sound button in the IDE. But don't worry about it, because when it actually gets compiled to OGG in the, um, when you run the game, um, the playback quality is fine. It's fine in the actual engine. Um, just the IDE playback is really low quality for whatever reason, maybe performance reasons, I'm not sure. Um, but just one thing to be aware of, so don't worry too much if you run into weird issues with the playback in here. Try it in the game, it'll probably be uh, fine. Okay, uh, let's delete that fresh sound there, and let's get started actually applying these. So playing a sound is actually really simple, and I'll show you how to do that right now. So we go to O Gun, and the begin step event, I've left myself a little reminder just for where I'm going to put these lines. Uh, this little here comment, um, but where it is is just where we click the left mouse button and our firing delay is less than zero, so it's on the exact frame that we create a bullet. So on the frame we create a bullet, that's the frame we want to play the shoot sound, okay, the little doom doom noise. Um, the line for that is audio underscore play underscore sound. If you're in uh, Game Make Studio 1.x and you're following this, um, one thing to note is that this line won't be recognized unless you've got use new audio engine ticked in preferences. I'm pretty sure that's not optional anymore in Game Maker Studio 2. Um, so um, audio play sound will work for you here if you're using 2. Uh, just if you're using 1.x you may need to go and enable that. I'm not sure if it's enabled by default depending on when you first picked up 1.x I guess. Um, so audio play sound and then the sound I'm going to use is SN shot. You'll have noticed um, my naming convention has changed for this slightly in that I'm using two lowercase letters to define the resource type for sounds and that's because it starts with an S and I already use S for uh, sprites, right? So I needed to distinguish it from uh, sprites, so I just added another letter. You might want to do SND or SND underscore, use whatever you like as long as it's reasonably consistent, okay? Um, so SN shot uh, priority, so there's three things that go into audio play sound. There's the index of the sound that you're going to play, that's SN shot for me here. There's the priority of the sound, that means if it's playing a bunch of sounds at once and it needs to drop them, you can use other commands to determine how many sounds you're allowed to play at once down one channel and so on and so forth. But if it's playing too many sounds and it needs to drop sound, it'll drop sounds that have the lowest priority, okay? Um, it's not something you need to worry too much about, um, early on especially, um, or if you don't have all that many sound effects, you're making a small thing. But um, try and just uh, set your priority accordingly, based on like, if you were hearing loads of sound at once, which are the most important sounds? There's no real scale for this, you can use any number like from like 0 to 10,000 or whatever, right? Um, and it's just a matter of whether or not the numbers are higher or lower than one another. I'd say shooting is like, not, like, if there are other sound effects playing, they might be more important, but Reasonably so, I'm just going to give it a priority of five, okay? Totally arbitrary, um, and we'll just base other sounds kind of around that, okay? Um, loops is the last one, and that's going to be either false if you don't want it to loop, or true if you do want it to loop. Uh, we don't want this to loop, so it's going to be false, okay? Um, if you had done true, it would just like, every time the sound finishes, it would just keep playing again. It would loop forever until we told it to stop. 
um, which obviously we don't want, but that's something you might want if you're using this to play music, okay? Um, that's really all there is to it, so if I run the game now, and I hit new game, we come to here, you should hopefully be able to hear that pretty clearly, okay? Really, really straightforward, um, and works really well. So the next sound that we want um, is going to be the death sound effect. So I'm going to come into Oh Dead, um, just when one of these guys dies, uh, one of these gets created, right? So in the create event for this, we'll play the sound effect. Seems like the easiest place to put it. Audio, play, sound, SN, death, uh, priority, we'll go that a 10. I think it's important to know something's died, possibly more important than just hearing every single one of those do-do-do-do shots, you know, just in case. So I'll give that a higher priority and loops can be false, obviously. Um, we know that'll work, so I'm going to carry on anyway and we'll see some of these things uh, in motion once we've added a few more of these. Uh, so I'm going to come to the menu now as well and in the step event for the menu, um, whenever we press enter on the menu, um, I'm also going to play the death sound effect just because I think that kind of noise that I've got for this, which I haven't shown you, but it's, it's that, it's a cool little noise. I think it's a good little fitting one for the menu as well. Next up, I'm going to play a sound when the player lands, okay? So they jump, and when they touch the floor, it's going to make a little doosh noise, okay? So I'm going to go to Oplayer and the step event. Down where we've done our animation, I'm just going to have this audio line piggyback along with this. Um, so this will vary. This can be a tougher one. Like You might have to write in your own sort of like if statements and things or work out some actual logic for playing the sound. Um, depending on how you've done all your movement and stuff like that, obviously. So far, I've been it's been pretty convenient the way I've structured it that I'm able to piggyback a lot of these sound effects along with exactly when certain things happen, okay? Um, because if... Uh, oh, I mean, we need to add one more condition in here, but otherwise we've got like a set of things for happening when uh, whenever the player is on the floor, and a set of things that will happen whenever we are not... Uh, on the floor. Sorry, it's the other way around, isn't it? That's when we're not on the floor. This is when we are on the floor, <laughs> okay? Um, so if we are on the floor, um, that's almost exactly what we need for knowing to play the sound effect, but what we want is to determine if we've just hit the floor. But we can do that because before we set any of these sprites, um, if we are in the air, we know that this is our sprite, okay? So we'll use that as the condition. Okay, it's a little bit piggybacky and like, um, you could argue a case for uh, writing this in a way that said like that would always be that so if we change this to have multiple sprites then then I guess if there were multiple air sprites and things then this would no longer work kind of thing you might want to do more of a like uh, are you grounded like do the actual check like is uh, was place meeting even though we know even though we know we're on the ground now make sure there's a proper check to say were we in the air before and use a proper variable to do it that way but while our game is simple, we can use simple solutions like this. <laughs> uh, remember, this is most this whole tutorial series is mostly about getting getting your stuff off the ground and working. Okay. So if sprite index is uh, S player A, then we know we were in the air a second ago. Okay. So we can write audio play sound S N landing uh, priority five. Sure, why not? And false. Um, Actually, we're at priority six, so it's slightly more than the, the shooting one, okay? Um, actually, no, we'll make it less. I think it's a very unimportant sound effect. It's just a little douche. It's quite quiet as well. So I think we don't, probably don't want that overwriting any of the sound effects. So let's make that lower. Um, that should be all we need for that. Um, the last sound effect I'm going to put in, and we can hear all of these together, is um, also in the player, but we're going to add a whole new event for this. I'm going to add uh, in the other section animation end. Okay, this is a really useful event. I use this one a lot. Um, uh, I'll leave that there actually. I'll put in footsteps since that's going to be the only thing this event does for now. Um, what we're going to do is say if, not if, if sprite underscore index is s player r audio play sound choose so you can see instead of writing the, uh, let's big this up so you can see the top and the bottom easier. Uh, so instead of just writing the uh, the sound index right away, I've written choose. Now what choose does is you give it as many inputs as you like, comma separated um, values, 
and uh, what it does is it just picks one of them at random, okay? Which is really, really cool, it's really useful. Um, so what I can do with that is pass in the values of four different sounds, um, or any number of different sounds, actually. I'm not sure if there is a limit to the number of things you can pass in to choose. It's, I guess the limit is how long you want the line of code to be. There probably is a limit, but I don't know what it is. Uh, SM foot one, SM foot two, SM foot three, and SM foot four. Okay, so I've made four different little footstep sound effects, all very subtly different from one another. You have to listen quite closely to even notice the difference, but you know it is there so that you don't know, we don't hear this exact same repetitive jish, 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 when you're you're walking. Um, and the priority for this will be super super low. Um, we'll just call it one. And false. Uh, we just we don't want it to to loop. And have I got all my brackets right there? I think I have. Cool. So the idea is whenever the animation comes to an end here. Um, every four frames of this, and, and this happens to be the sprite, every four frames of this we play another step animation, uh, step sound effect. You'll notice that's not properly synced up, I mean we could sort of move this around I guess, so that, um, so if we make uh, the last frame, the first frame, and this frame, first frame, so move it along like that, so the last frame is always the footstep, then maybe it's it's, it's lined up correctly with like the actual, the, the, the step, I guess the animation up to you how precise you want to be with all that you might you might find you need to uh, adjust things a little to get it to sound exactly right it doesn't matter too much i didn't even change it at all before when i tested this earlier and it sounded fine um so yeah we'll have a sound effect play whenever this animation finishes um and because of that uh sorry when we do that we choose at random one of those four sound effects rather than just playing um just playing one over and over right so yeah, these are all just little, I'm not sure you can even hear that in the video, they are really quite quiet. Because they're just meant to be subtle, and so you can kind of hear them when nothing else is playing. So you, you just get this sort of, just adds to the little feel, you get a little bit of a rumble when you're, you're, you're running along. Okay, uh, so let's try all these together now. So if I run the game, you can see we've got that noise when we select an option on the menu. I walk along, that sound is there, it might be difficult to hear on the video. And you can hear the landing sound effect as well. And if I shoot these guys, the more obvious sound effects come into play. Okay. Um, I feel like I probably should make those footstep uh, noises a bit louder. But um, you can hear them and you modify them yourselves when you put them in the game anyway. Um, hopefully you get the idea anyway of how all that works. Um, so one other thing I'm going to show you as well is with the landing sound effect. Um, I don't think this is something super necessary for this game, but it's a useful trick to know how to do. Um, so I am going to show you how it works. What you can do is you can vary the pitch of a sound inside of Game Maker um, using a command called audio sound pitch. Okay, and I specify a sound, in this case SN landing, and a pitch. One being your default normal pitch, okay? Um, and what pitch is, if you don't already know, is sort of like how high or low the sound sounds. <laughs> if I set this to 0 0.5, it would go deeper and be like kind of thing. If I had to set it higher, it goes higher. So like geesh, geesh, kind of thing, right? <laughs> if that makes sense. Now what I can do is do something like random range in here and say 0 0.5 to 1.5. Okay, and then that'll give us a value, any a random value every single time between 0.5 and 1.5, okay, and adjust the pitch that way. Um, I'm not gonna do it that way, but that's how you can do it, that is a valid way of doing it. I'm gonna do it with choose, okay? Just that same one again, so I'm gonna put in a couple of values, 0.8, 1.0, and 1.2, okay? Um, the reason I use choose is just so, like, I'm not too sure off the bat what this is going to sound like, okay? Like, maybe changing the pitch in this direction doesn't sound good, or maybe I need to change the value and make it better, bigger and higher and so on. And when I'm using random range, I'm getting a huge range of different values that all might sound different from one another, right? Uh, you get 1.11 and 1.12, and maybe they sound a bit different. I'm not sure how... Um, how how many decimal places, like how accurate and how specific. Um, there's a word I'm missing. Oh, I think you know what I mean though. The, um, 
uh, audio sound pitch is. Like, I don't know if 0.85 actually produces something different or 0.88 or so on and so forth, or how you know how much detail it takes that number into account. But by specifying three specific ones, we know it's these three specific numbers that are one of which are being chosen. So if I hear that the high sounding one sounds a bit off, I can play with this value and change it around and so on. Whereas like. And I know which one of those values it's going to be, whereas it's harder to tell if I used random range, okay? So if I jump up and down now. It's subtle, but every single one of those sounds has a slightly different pitch to it. which helps just to add a little bit of variety in there sometimes so you don't hear the exact same sound over and over and over again, okay? I picked the really subtle ones to sort of demonstrate this with. Um, so just to make it really clear, I'm just gonna pop into the gun uh, now and where I've put uh, the shooting. Um, I wouldn't ever want to actually do it with this one, I don't think, uh, because I quite, uh, I mean, for some certain kinds of gun, you might wanna do it. Um, but for this kind of machine gun thing, I think it actually sounds very appropriate to have it be sort of mono and like duka 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 duka. Um, but we'll see what this sounds like. That actually sounds pretty good. I might leave it like that actually. I think that sounds pretty good. So where before we just had duka 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 and it was completely mono, which I I still I, I still like. I think is good. But there's just a tiny variation in here now where it's like, like uh, there's a, a one and three of it being these different ones. So uh, each one is either the, the normal pitch or it's 0.2 lower or 0.2 higher, which I think is a nice subtle variation between those. It makes, it makes the gun sound a bit janky. I, I, I kind of like that. Um, so I will leave that in. Um, so that's a way of mixing up your sounds. Um, and changing the pitch at which they play and so on and so forth. You could change their volume and stuff as well, but um, we'll leave that for more like a music fading in, fading out kind of thing. Um, if you actually want to change, like if you're changing these permanently, like I wouldn't, I wouldn't do that. I wouldn't use that as a way to change, like adjust your pitch permanently or adjust volume permanently of sound effects. Um, you should probably just do that by baking it into the sound, like actually going and editing the sound and making that lower pitch or higher pitch or higher volume or lower volume. Um, in your original editor, okay, um, rather than doing it in code uh, runtime. The reason to do it in code at runtime is if you want to mix it up and use a combination of different pitches and sounds and things like that. That's the best way to use it. Okay, so that's sound effects, all really simple stuff. Um, that's why I've gone into a little bit of detail because uh, uh, otherwise just playing the sound is really straightforward. Um, and I'll catch you guys next time. Thank you very much for watching. I hope you're enjoying it. A huge shout out to my Patreon supporters who get all sorts of cool perks in return for enabling me to do these videos. Special shout out in particular to Doan Techben, Dan Inomule, Andreas Tabak, Ryan Senecal, Giles Montgomery, Harold Guidry, Nathaniel Walsh, Louis R. Pereira, Nick Slabish, Stephen Hagen, Jason McMillan, Seanathan, Crispy, Owen Morgan, and Bowser the Dog. Thank you all very much for your support, and I'll catch you guys next time.